All right, man, peace. So the Cleveland Cavaliers are starting to sound like that guy who had a good woman and he ran her off and now he's going to spend the rest of his life making excuses in regards to why that quote-unquote relationship didn't work. They just cannot seem to get over Kyrie Irving. They're doing whatever they can to cover their own asses and particularly LeBron James's ass whenever discussing the Kyrie Irving topic because they don't want to assert that LeBron James is the reason why they ultimately traded Kyrie. They cannot assert that, at least not until LeBron James leaves, because they think that that will ruin any chance that they have of resigning LeBron if they attribute any blame whatsoever to him in regards to Kyrie getting traded. So now they have to spend the remainder of this season, just as they spent the last month and a half of this season thus far, trying to take the blame away from LeBron and trying to change the narrative on exactly why Kyrie was traded in the first place, which is that Cleveland came to LeBron and told him that they were ready to trade Kyrie and receive Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, and they would pull the trigger on the trade as long as LeBron agreed to, you know, to sign an extension on his deal. And he refused. So, of course, they turned on that trade. But because Kyrie demanded a trade, they said, you know what? We don't think that LeBron's going to resign anyway. So, you know, what we're going to do we're going to make sure that we get draft picks for Kyrie. Because after LeBron leaves, if we keep Kyrie, it's only going to be one more year for Kyrie. And we think Kyrie's going to leave us too. And we can't beat Golden State with a team that has LeBron and Kyrie anyway. We saw that last season. So we might as well trade Kyrie, get some draft picks, and see if we can win this season with LeBron and Isaiah Thomas. Because we don't think LeBron is staying anyway. Because if he's not going to sign an extension... When we're getting back Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, he's not going to sign, period. So that was the comedy of errors that occurred over the course of this previous preseason. So that's very obvious that's what occurred. But now that they're coming down the home stretch of this season, they have to try to spin the narrative to make LeBron James look like the good guy. And Stephen A. Smith, for one, is tired of it. And <laughs> he exploded at the talk of LeBron James not being at least partially culpable. So let's see what happens. Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. This is Sports Center right now. I'm Doug Kazarian. We are learning more information about what precipitated the Kyrie Irving trade from Cleveland to Boston last summer. ESPN's Dave McMenamin is reporting the Cavs had informal internal talks on draft night with a large circle of front office members about what Irving could command on the trade market. Now, that news trickled down to Irving, who subsequently requested a formal trade. Here's In other words, Kyrie said, you're not going to dump me, I'm leaving. That's what happened. Very, very simple. And I believe that that was partially the straw that broke the camel's back, because I think that Kyrie had spent the previous two seasons contemplating requesting a trade anyway, because he was getting tired of LeBron and all his bitch energy. And also, he just wanted to see if he could lead a team. So it's, it's not that difficult to figure out what was going on. I've been telling you guys this even prior to this season. There's more from Dave and the growing relationship between general manager Kobe Altman and LeBron James. Well, they're claiming that the relationship between LeBron James and Kobe Altman is growing. That's what the Cleveland media is hoping because they need LeBron to stay. Because LeBron has set up an, an almost unparalleled cult of personality in Cleveland. They worship him over there. I mean, he has, his fair, he has his fair share of worshipers all across the United States and the earth. But in Cleveland, that's like, that's, <laughs> that's like Wakanda for, for LeBron. He's like the Black Panther there, and that's like Wakanda. Some of the relationship uh, faults between LeBron and Kobe were Kobe Altman's fault. For the beginning missteps, that meeting was ill-conceived. Uh, later in the summer, LeBron James made it clear that he did not want to trade Kyrie Irving. Bullshit. Bullshit. He made it clear that he did not want to trade Kyrie after Kyrie demanded the trade when the initial trade that they were going to pull on Kyrie unbeknownst to him fell through. That's what happened. These people are trying to change up history because they need to in order to appease LeBron James. If LeBron was able to get back Paul George and Eric Bledsoe without having to sign the extension, he would have pulled the trigger on the trade. As I told you guys last season when he claimed that, that the team needed another ball handler, 
He was talking about Chris Paul and he was ready to trade Kyrie for Chris Paul. But that fell through. And I believe that that set Kyrie's radar off. That set off his spidey senses. From there, he was like, okay, this nigga's trying to set me up. And when that whole trade request or trade rumor came down, Kyrie said, you know what? Forget all this. I'm not going to stay here and try to help this nigga win another championship so he could break out and leave me here, you know, with, with, with damn, you know, as Shannon Sharp would say, a squeegee and a couple of sponges to try to, to try to take over this team for the next season. Then I'm here by myself for one season in a free agency year. We don't do anywhere near as well. And then my marketability drops. And then on top of that, of course, he has Kobe Bryant advising him, <laughs> advising him behind closed doors. And Kobe gave him the right advice. He gave him the right advice. Yet they went ahead and traded him anyway. And then when the Cavs were having their doldrums, Kobe was not around the team. And I detail in the story, one, he was with his fiance to be there for the birth of his child who experienced some health complications. And he was also going through NBA draft preparation. The team's never really had to deal with that the last couple of years. But Kobe did a lot of good in repairing that relationship by going to LeBron James before the trade deadline occurred and said, hey, LeBron, here's what I'm looking at. We got this deal on the table. We got that deal on the table. It could look like this at the end of the day. It could look like that. But I wanted to make you sure that you know what's going on and that we are going to get you help because we recognize that what you're playing with out in the court is not serving your talents enough to try to get something accomplished. In other words, the team that they had before they, they detonated the that team to bring in the new recruits, they were not compliant enough to run the LeBron James system, particularly Isaiah Thomas. Isaiah Thomas did not want to run the LeBron James system. He wanted to go rogue and jack up as many shots as he could because his attitude was, if they expect me to be Kyrie, I have to get up as many shots as I can during the games because this team doesn't want to practice. And they're going to expect me to be averaging somewhere around 25 to 27 points a game in the playoffs. So everybody was pretty much caught between a, between a rock and a hard place. With the Cavs this year. So, uh, you know, after that happened, LeBron thanked Kobe Altman and credited him by name in a press conference, something that happened all season long. And perhaps that will be the start of them having a solid working relationship going forward. For more on this, let's head back to first take. Uh, thank you. So the deal is sources are saying the Cavs were sloppy in talking about Irving's future and that it should have taken place within the smallest of leadership circles. Max. In other words, they have to explain away how Kyrie heard about it before it happened. He wasn't supposed to hear about it. That's the blame that they're taking in an attempt to try to expunge LeBron's record of guilt in regards to why Kyrie is not there, because that's been the one of the biggest that's, what, that's been one of the biggest storylines in the NBA during this whole season. Not only that Kyrie wanted out from the LeBron James experience, but that he went to a team in Boston and was able to dominate, or has been thus far this season. Everyone expected him to struggle because he had never experienced team-wide success on Cleveland before. So, of course, everyone tried to attribute the team's success entirely to LeBron. And when LeBron's team seemed to struggle in the initial part of the season, all of a sudden you started to look at Kyrie Irving in, in, a, in a greater light with a greater deal of, of, of appreciation, which is good for him. Does this whole thing change your opinion on the Cavs, excuse me, the Kyrie yeah, Cavs situation? No, because I, I've never had an opinion. I've had an observation, and, and it's been the same observation from before the season. Anyone could see what went on here. LeBron was being sneaky. He was trying to do his best to bring in more players. Of course, he knew that the only real bargaining chip he had was Kyrie Irving. He was trying to work that deal out on the sly. Kyrie found out about it and checkmated him. That's what happened. Not at all, because Stephen A., you put your finger on it from the beginning. I'll give you credit. This is on LeBron. He is the leader of the team. He made it such that Kyrie felt he needed out of there. Now, was it handled optimally by the Cavs? No. The, the, the handling of this was suboptimal. They could have gotten more trade value for Kyrie than they did had they handled it differently. However... Well, it's hard to agree with that, seeing as I believe that what the Cavaliers were looking for were draft picks. I think that their mindset was Kyrie wants out. And he's going to leave either way. 
Let's work with Boston because they have the most draft picks. We know that LeBron's going to leave at the end of this season because he refused to sign extension, no matter who we, who we tell him we're going to bring in. So I don't think that there was another team that had as many draft picks as Boston. And really, what other team was going to trade for Kyrie other than the initial trade that they were, were trying to pull for Paul George and Eric Bledsoe? There were not that many offers on the market other than, other than that mega trade, which was going to bring back something that was even commensurate for Kyrie. Boston was the, was the next best choice because they had the draft picks. And, and Isaiah Thomas, who you hoped would be able to approximate what he had been the previous two seasons. And a Jay Crowder, who you hoped would be someone who could spell LeBron James and guarding Kevin Durant. Obviously, we know in hindsight that it did not work out. But that is what they were thinking. They, they, they were thinking two years down the line, Kyrie's not going to be here. He's very unhappy. It's clear that LeBron's not going to be here. He refused to sign an extension. That was their thinking. You have to understand you will never get optimal trade value for an asset when it is known that that guy wants to leave. There are no secrets. Look, if I knew about it, you think NBA executives didn't know about it? Kyrie wanted out. The Cavs were never going to get a return equivalent to Kyrie's value. I thought they did pretty well under the circumstances. So did I. So did I. But that is LeBron's fault. He undermined the value of a tradable asset. The media is finally starting to wake up to LeBron James and his hijinks, his attempts to manipulate people. And really only the simple-minded get manipulated by LeBron because... Uh, the brother's a genius on the basketball court, and I think that he has a certain amount of raw intelligence. But a lot of his hijinks are feminine and very transparent. But one that probably should have never wanted out in the first place, that's on LeBron. Stephen A? You know, right now, as I sit here and look at y'all, I'm ticked off. Well, tell us how you feel, nigga. This is the kind of stuff that gets on my last damn nerves about LeBron. So now, months later, let's clean this up to the point where he looks totally innocent and all the... I never wanted Kyrie to leave. That was never a part of the equation. I had nothing to do... Well, look, let me say this because Stephen A. Smith is on point with this. But I told you guys in another video, I believe one of the LeBron videos that I did, that in this current day and age, with the social media following that many of these athletes court, they are modern day politicians. They are modernized politicians, I should say, in a new way. They're trying to create cults of personality. That's what politicians do. It's not about what they can fulfill. It's about what they can get you to believe they're going to do for you. And that's what the LeBron James experience is all about. It's not about what he actually does. It's about what he can get you to believe. So he has spinsters in the background, or, or spin masters, I should say, in the background. Hell, he may have some spinsters, too. may have some old bitches <laughs> working for him. Who knows? But he has some spin masters in the background whose job it is to make sure that he always looks like the victim and the good guy. Because LeBron has plans for himself after his career is over. Don't get it twisted. Stop. Just stop it. See, this is the kind of stuff that when I remember how, how many times, Max and Molly, have y'all heard me talk about him trying to control the narrative? Yeah. This is the kind of stuff that gets on my damn nerves. Because literally speaking, LeBron is right. He did tell them, I don't want Kyrie to go. Yes, when he did not have any options anymore. Because LeBron thinks that everything is supposed to go his way. He liked the dude who got caught sleeping with a bunch of hoes by his main chick, and the main chick doesn't agree that he can have more than one woman, and she tells him, I'm gone. And now all of a sudden, now he wants to claim that he's going to be a one-woman man. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. That's all it is. It's just LeBron trying to spin the narrative. I get it. The, the NBA is an entertainment league. They need these little stories. LeBron, to be quite honest with you, LeBron is the gift that keeps on giving. This nigga is like a walking soap opera, man. It's crazy. No, I don't want Isaiah and Crowder. But did you say that when you had an opportunity to send Kyrie away? And you were going to end up getting both Paul George and Eric Bledsoe. Thank you, sir. You're finally starting to get on my wavelength, bro. 
Good job. What's today's date? February some, February 24th. You're finally getting there, bro. I, I was telling you that last year. Good for you. You didn't say that then. You didn't say that then, which is what also what ultimately got Kyrie tipped off. Dave McMenamin didn't do a bad job here. He doesn't. Look at LeBron carrying on like a damn chick. Kyrie's like, oh, this nigga breath smell like Funyuns. <laughs> he does a great job covering the cast, but that's the part of the story that he didn't articulate enough. You had an opportunity to get both Paul George and Eric Bledsoe. LeBron James didn't poo poo that. Kyrie Irving came on. Look at LeBron. LeBron like, nigga, I told you, give me the ball when I get past half court. Give me the goddamn ball. I didn't tell you to run a play. What the fuck we need to run plays for? Just give me the ball on top of the key and park your ass in the corner there. He on first take in studio for two hours and said, quote, I have been feeling this way for a while, but I'm not going to do anything to get in the way of the team and our ultimate goals. I'm not going to be the person that you point the finger at. Remember when he said that, Max? Remember when he said that, Molly? Max don't remember anything that Kyrie said that day. He's still mad that Kyrie made him look foolish. He doesn't remember anything that Kyrie said other than a lot of the vitriol that Kyrie sent his way. It made him like a complete idiot to the point where he was still mad days later. Him and Will Kane vented like a couple of holes in the hair salon. Molly, that's what he said. And so what I'm looking at it is that, wait a minute. So now months later, LeBron James, a grown man. Grown ass man. Grown ass man, Stephen A. Don't forget that. Great. Well, I agree with most of that. I don't know about great leader. Champion three times over. Been to seven, eight straight NBA finals. But you're going to go out your way for this narrative to come out now? Oh. He has to, Steve. Because if his team flames out, like it just might, who knows? If, this, if his team flames out in the second round, he has to have a narrative already prepared as to why he couldn't get back to the finals. That's what he's thinking about. That's what his team is thinking about. It's like an actor who's a top-level A-list actor. And he films a movie that he feels like is going to be a dud. He has to create some excuses before the movie even comes out. Well, I didn't agree with that director. I tried to get them to rewrite the script, but they wouldn't. Things like that, that, you know, top-level actors will have their publicists put out in the, in the media prior to the film coming out. That's what LeBron is doing. He's a politician. Oh, hell no. Hell no. No, 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 no. That does not happen now. The fact is, is that Kyrie left because Kyrie didn't want to be there with him. I agree. I've been telling you that, Steve. It's about time you figured it out. Kyrie left because Kyrie wanted to determine his own future instead of being at the mercy of LeBron. Well, damn. Let me find out you've been watching my videos. Well, welcome to the channel, nigga. Kyrie left. Because the Cleveland Cavaliers as an organization capitulated in most instances to whatever LeBron has wanted since LeBron has returned. That does not make LeBron a bad guy. That doesn't make him the worst person in the world or the worst athlete or anything like that. He didn't do anything salacious or really underhanded towards Kyrie or anything like that. Allegedly. Allegedly. You seem to imply that there was some salaciousness involved between uh, LeBron and Kyrie. You implied that before, that there was something that went on between them that's, quote-unquote, none of our business. Those were your words. We all know that when you use those terms, it's normally a female involved to the point where even Molly Karam asked you point blank on TV, was it over a woman? I guess it'll come out, it'll come out later, like they say. If it doesn't come out in the wash, it'll come out in the rinse. But his willingness to try to control the narrative is what incriminates him more than anything else. And that's the damn problem. Kyrie Irving, LeBron did not cultivate the relationship with Kyrie Irving the way that he was supposed to. Well, you know, I don't think that he felt like he should have been compelled to have to cultivate a relationship with Kyrie. Because he thought he was coming back to Cleveland, the conquering hero. He thought that Kyrie should have been waiting for him in the locker room with a pencil in his hand, another pencil in his ear, and about five notebooks ready to listen to the great one, LeBron, teach him how to win. And he was surprised when he walked into the locker room and Kyrie looked at him like, okay, whenever you're ready, I'm ready. 
let's go. We're going to be co-leaders of this thing. And it took LeBron a while to break Kyrie down to where he had to tell him that, no, you're not going to run the point. That's not how I play. I don't have a real point guard on my teams because I need the basketball. Here's what you're going to be doing. And that was the source of a lot of the early friction between LeBron and Kyrie. Remember those games that Kyrie was having? I think he had a game in Utah where he had like 35 points or 34 points, but he had like one assist. Everybody was concentrating on what Kyrie wasn't doing. It took a long time for Kyrie to adjust to playing with LeBron James and learning the LeBron system. And that was part of the reason why LeBron was not compelled to be more open with, with developing a relationship with Kyrie. I think that he thought that it was beneath him. He thought that Kyrie should have been more receptive to just being a, a follower, a member of the cult of LeBron. And when he saw that he wasn't, it was like, hmm. You know, like I tell you in Star Wars, Jedi mind tricks only work on the weak-minded. You know, Jedis operate according to mental suggestion. They could tell someone to do something and they'll do it. Kyrie is not weak-minded. So it took LeBron a long time to figure out how to win with him, how to dwell with him. That's why he was so eager to trade him. LeBron was like, if I have to share the locker room with a guy who thinks that he's on my level, I might, it might as well be a friend. I might as well go get Chris Paul. Because at least I know if I bring in Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, Eric Bledsoe is signed to my, you know, to my, to my company, and Paul George is like a little brother to me. He wants to be me, so I won't have any problems with him. Kyrie had the alpha male person, personality. And like I tell you guys, you cannot have two alpha males in the same locker room for very long. Kyrie Irving didn't feel it's valued by LeBron, period. And just owning that, manning up, and owning that is all he got, to, all he has to do. Oh, but no, he can't do that. Instead, well, now months later, we hear the narrative. And well, that's the kind of stuff, because what that does, Max, is make somebody like me and anybody who reports it look like the bad guy, like we hating on LeBron when we do... Well, how could you be worried about how you look? How could you be worried about looking like the bad guy when you know that you're on TV every day? Like, come on, Steve. That, that's kind of whack juice. You know that you have access to TV, Facebook. That's why I tell people there's no more excuses now. With social media, people can't say, well, we, we don't have the freedom to get our message out. That's all you have now is freedom. But quite frankly, a lot of motherfuckers have too much freedom because people have all these outlets via social media and most of them have nothing to say. You actually have access to multiple social media pl platforms, your own network. So whatever LeBron James puts out, you can squash if you feel like what he's saying is invalid. So that's not really a relevant point. We're doing no such thing. We're just saying, damn, it ain't that big of a deal. You can't, you can't own that. No, he's not going to own that, Steve. He's not going to own that. He can't. Because if, if for some reason Boston gets to the finals and Cleveland goes out in the second round, How's it going to look with him all summer being asked, how, how could you have let uh, Kyrie go? How could you have requested Kyrie get traded, LeBron? Because, you know, they'll turn it into that. It won't even be that LeBron wasn't against it. It was LeBron, <laughs> LeBron designed to trade himself and faxed it into the Cleveland GM and said, get this done ASAP. LeBron mentally wouldn't, have been, it wouldn't be able to deal with that if Boston got to the finals. He has to set up his excuse early. That's what this is about. Try to change that Usually now mid -career, going through all of this? He'll own it in the 30 for 30, Stephen A. Usually mid-career, that's not yeah, the way it works. Exactly. I agree. I agree. Shaq, exactly. can, own, Shaq can own it about exactly. 10 years later. Kobe and Shaq can own it now years later. I agree. And Shaq is a lot like LeBron. They have very similar personalities. Both attention whores, both very mature, both alpha male personalities. And they're going to gobble up any other possible alpha male personalities in the locker room. The thing with Shaq, and I mentioned this before, when Shaq went to Miami, he understood, I have to make this work with this kid, D-Wade. Not only because I'm too old to, to be trying to dominate the team, but if me and him have a falling out, this will be the third straight great wing player that I fall out with. At least with the first two, I could say, well, Orlando was, was, a, sm was, a, you know, was a small pond. I'm a big fish. With Kobe, I could say, well, Kobe is, you know, is a jerk and he's and he's he's selfish. He's greedy. If I if I get into another issue with D Wade, it's gonna be three straight, and then people are gonna start pointing the finger at me. They're gonna say, well, you're the only constant, Shaq. So I have to make this work.
because three straight is a confirmation. You know, two straight could just be a coincidence. But of course exactly. you're right. And here's your best point could in my be opinion. Right. right. And here's your best point in my opinion. Um, you know, a lot of times I'll get on you about, well, what does that have to do with LeBron controlling the narrative? In this case, reports that come out like this are exactly what you're describing because they're half-truths. It's not that it's not literally true, like he didn't want Kyrie for, right. for uh, 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 Isaiah and Crowder. The point was... At that point, you've so undermined his trade value because everyone knows he's out. You can't get anything better. And well, that's not true, Max Kellerman. They actually had something better on the table. They had something better. They had Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, but LeBron refused to sign the extension because he was more concerned with his vendetta with Dan Gilbert than he was with you know trying to create a, a better dynamic for him to win a championship. And if LeBron had gotten... Paul George and Eric Bledsoe, they would have been a problem this year. They would have been a serious problem. I still think that they may have been a little too old. They still may have had to make a trade to bring in some younger players, but they would have been a problem. And LeBron with Paul George, I just said Bledsoe and Paul George, LeBron with Paul George in particular immediately becomes one of the all-time great two-way wing combinations, which, which traditionally has been the easiest way to win a championship, Stephen A., whether that's Magic well, and Worthy, Jordan and Pippen, LeBron and Wade. Stay, and they, no, they stay on it. your other point. Stay on your other point. When you talked about Shaq with Penny in the 30 for 30 or Shaq with Kobe in the sit-down and all of this other stuff, it always comes out later. You're absolutely right about that. But here is a fact that is undeniable. Kyrie Irving wanted to depart from Cleveland ultimately because he wanted to have control over his own future. Yes, and control over his own life. I mean, that, that was obvious. All you have to do is look at Kyrie, and when you just examine him psychologically, he's not built to be up under another man his whole life. At some point, he's going to say, I need to be free, I need to be me. Instead of being at the mercy of LeBron. Does that sound like an individual to you that said, I don't want to be at the mercy of the organization? No, every player is at the mercy of the organization, to some degree, so every player accepts that. He didn't want to be at the mercy of a particular player mm -hmm. who happens to be Think a superstar. About this real quick, now, why Stephen would a? that be, Max? Yep. It would be because it would be because you know the star had that kind of clout, and you believe the star was in on you being yeah. moved out. Absolutely, it's not about what he believed; it's what he knew. He knew that LeBron was in on it. Anybody could see that. I'm sure that either Dan Gilberts or the the former GM most likely told him that LeBron was in on it. And that, that sealed the deal for him because when you hear Kyrie talk about it, he speaks about it in an affirmative way. He doesn't speak about it speculatively. He speaks about it like he, know, like he knew. So it is what it is. You know, they, they got together. They made it look good for the cameras during All-Star break. Kyrie's very shrewd. He understands that the, the power of, of knowing when to appear weak, you know, like, like Sun Tzu states, when you're strong, appear weak. When you're weak, appear strong. When you're happy where you are, you're in an advantageous position and you see a rival. Why exert unnecessary energy? Why emote unnecessarily? That's an expense of energy that can be used somewhere else. Don't carry all that quote-unquote quote -unquote anger with you through the all-star break. That's supposed to be a time of relaxation. You play the same game that he's playing, except just play it better. You take all that energy that you saved up into the second half of the season. Hey, that real quick, fact. Stephen A., real Period. quick, when you think about where relationships between two superstars have deteriorated and a dynasty was cut short, even Shaq and Kobe had Phil Jackson holding it together for a while. Even, you know... Not for a while. Phil Jackson was Kobe's handler. He had to hold it together. He had to hold together. He had to handle Kobe because uh, without Phil Jackson there, Kobe's ego would have run amok and he would have destroyed the whole team. It's Phil Jackson who was able to, to make sure that Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe were able to, to reach their highest level of potential. Without him, they, th those guys would not have even gotten to the finals on that team together because they would have cannibalized each other. 
Now Shaq on another team where he was able to be the, the unquestioned alpha, then yeah, he, he would have been able to get to the finals. They should have got to the finals in 2005 had Dwayne Wade not gotten hurt. That would have been an interesting finals to see them against the Spurs in 05. You know, you look at Pat Riley, right? He could hold it together. And when I say them, I'm talking about the Miami Heat with Dwayne Wade and Shaq. Together. There's no Pat Riley or Phil Jackson with the Cavs. That the absence of that is the problem. Yeah. So LeBron can run amok. Yeah. And that's part of the, you know, the gift and the curse of LeBron is that he's, you know, he's probably the greatest player all, of all time to never play with a great coach. But he's at the point now where you know, you don't even know if he can play for a great coach because a great coach would would have to fall back and let him play the LeBron system because that's what he's been doing his whole career. That's why I say a lot of guys talk about wanting to play for Pop. You know, that's like a wet dream that a lot of these guys try to uh, put out into the atmosphere. People like Kobe and LeBron, oh, I'd love to play for Pop. No, you wouldn't. No, your ass wouldn't. Yeah, no one is Mom, swaying Stephen Mom, A's opinion here. What? What? Molly, he's the best player in the world. Mm -hmm. Great player, great guy, all of that other stuff. Yep. What Achilles heel. Constantly trying to control the damn narrative yeah. and get mad at anybody mm -hmm. that disagrees with him when, when, when Stevie clearly, wanted to see what the hell you doing. Clearly it didn't work. You let LeBron do what he wants. It didn't you know? work controlling the narrative for you at least. All right, guys. Well, as I've stated previously, controlling the narrative is uh, part and parcel to being a king and having a ruling class mentality. I mean, if we, if we want to go there, that's what kings do. They want to control the narrative. Uh, when you control the narrative, you control how your minions think about you. That's how you maintain control over them. That's why I state that the modern day super athlete is more interested in developing a cult of personality than anything else. That's why social media is so important. That's why being quote unquote woke is so important to them. That is how they bring in the masses. Oh, he's a liberator. Look at LeBron. He's woke. He's going to lead us to freedom. But anyway, peace.